What's up, Royal Spartan Tribe? This is Royal Spartan 125 back for yet another great reaction. Okay, this is episode one Three Disturbing Home Alone Stories. This is by Daily Dose of Creeps. And the guy who does the videos, it was actually in my chat right now. And it's great to have an actual content creator here in the chat while we're looking at his video gonna be awesome okay we've already looked at the trailer i probably already posted it to youtube um yeah just to give you guys an idea of what to expect from this sort of thing we're gonna start with episode one and then move up to episode two and episode three at some point i'm not gonna do them all in one night you know but i will get them done if this is what you guys like so this is a request of video by the content creator on youtube is a request of video if you'd like me to react to any other video, just leave it in the comment section down below, and I'll get to it as soon as I can. I will leave the links in the description down below for this video and its channel. And check out my links while you're there. Let's jump in. Your videos are possessed. That's good to know. <laughs> Alright, ooh. I'm excited for this one. This is Daily Dose of Creeps. Welcome to episode one. Three disturbing Home Alone stories. Story one, The Mad Animus. I was 12 years old when it happened. Even though I'm nearing my 30s now, I remember the day <coughs> like it was yesterday. Believe me, it's not something you would forget about in a hurry. I was home alone. My parents had gone out to a friend's place for dinner that night and told me they would be back late. They were going to arrange for a babysitter, but like most 12 year olds, I convinced them I was old enough to look after myself for a few hours, something I'd quickly come to regret. They reluctantly agreed, and I excitedly ushered them out the door, eager to have the whole house to myself for a few hours. Yeah. I spent the first hour or so playing Soul Calibur on my GameCube and devouring all the junk food I could find from both the cupboards and the fridge. It was already starting to get dark at this point, the sky turning a deep shade of purple. It must have been around 8 o'clock at night. It being South Florida started to rain pretty heavily at this point, per usual. My parents told me not to expect them back until about 10, so I still had about 2 hours to myself. By the time it reached 9 o'clock, I was starting to doze off. I turned off the TV and headed to my room. I must have fallen asleep at some point because next thing I knew I was suddenly jolted awake. <laughs> my parents must have been home, or so I thought at the time. What? Then I noticed the clock by my yep. bed said it was only 9.30. The house was quiet. My parents are usually very loud coming to the house, so I quickly realized they couldn't be home. Something had woken me up, though. I was disorientated at first and thought I was seeing things. Okay, before it gets started, I just want to say, if that's your voice, if that's you doing the narration, you have the perfect voice for this. It, honestly. <laughs> wow. I'm not going to say your voice is creepy, because that would be, you know, that would be mean. But for this here, you definitely have a perfect voice for it, if that's your voice. Wow. Yeah, the, 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 the sound effects, the... the all that stuff, all the like images and all. It's perfect. All of it is great so far. I like it. So, yeah. You realize they couldn't be home. Something had woken me up, though. Mm -hmm. I was disorientated at first. I thought I was seeing things. But as the sleep cleared from my head, I realized what I was seeing was real. There was a face at the window. <laughs> what? I was completely frozen as we both just stared at each other. The face was smiling. Oh. The smile slowly became a grimace. That's when I began to scream. 
but it was drowned out by the sound of glass breaking as the Whoa. window exploded inwards. I jumped out of bed, tripping over the bed covers and stumbling to get away from the window as the woman burst through. She must have been about 70 years old, and she was stark naked. Oh! That's an image I'll never forget, no matter how much I try to. As soon as she was on her feet, her eyes blazing with certain madness, she reached out to grab me. Her fingernails were sharp and yellow. Run. I almost felt them ghost the back of my neck as I turned and fled the room, slamming the door shut behind me. Yeah. She was delayed for a moment as she tried to get the door open, and by that point I was already in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. The only room in the house with a lock on it. Nice. I was out of breath, and I remember clearly the sweat gathering on my neck as I sat there, trying to comprehend what was happening. At first I wondered if I had imagined the whole thing. That thought quickly disappeared when she began slamming against the door. I scrambled back as far away from the door as I could and fell into the bathtub. In a panic, I turned the faucet on for some reason. I don't know why, but... Is anybody else going to be thinking twice before staying at home alone from now on? Like, I'm, I'm what, 41 years old? And thankfully, I don't live alone when I'm listening to this. If I did, I, I probably wouldn't be able to sleep tonight. Oh, wow. This, yeah, you... You've knocked it out of the park as far as I'm concerned so far. <laughs> wow. I scrambled back as far away from the door as I could and fell into the bathtub. Mm -hmm. In a panic, I turned the faucet on for some reason. I don't know why, but yes. my clothes were completely soaked. She was hitting that door so hard, I was worried it might start to crack open from the sheer force. <laughs> the old woman Thanks. definitely has some unnatural strength to her. Yeah. After a while, she gave up. I heard her move away from the door and start shuffling through the rest of the house, muttering to herself. She kept saying stop or leave me alone or something like that over and over again. I don't know how long yeah, I stayed crazy. in that bathroom. At the time I knew nothing of religion, but I was praying for my parents to come home. <laughs> After some time I decided to brave going out. No. I hadn't heard the woman for some time. Oh, I thought God. she might have left. I tiptoed across the hallway to the kitchen and peered around. There was nothing. I could barely breathe and my heart felt like it would burst from my chest. I could feel her staring at me, so I turned around. Let me ask you, who who would be brave enough to, to or even dumb enough, to leave the, <laughs> the safety of the locked room? Now, I'm sleeping in that bathtub. If I'm sleeping at all, I'm staying right there. Definitely. No, I'm, I'm not leaving. No. Mm -mm. I'm going to stay there until my parents come home. Or somebody comes home, or whatever. Yeah, DJ Fetching, it is like Llama Arts, but without the animations. But you see, the thing about Llama Arts is, Llama Arts doesn't do the original stories. It does the animations. So, because I've seen uh, the some of the original videos, and they're like this. You know, they show images and stuff. And then Llama Arts, they must do a deal with Llama Arts or something. Or Llama Arts must take the content and do animations for it. And then put, we post it. I don't know what way to do it. There was nothing. I could barely breathe and my heart felt like it would burst from my chest. Mm -hmm. I could feel her staring at me. So I turned around and there she was. <laughs> oh. Still in the darkness of the hallway grinning See? at me. I told you. Missing half her teeth. <clears throat> I screamed again and bolted for the front door. Yes. My fingers barely touched the handle when I remembered my parents had locked it before they left. Oh. I had no clue where the keys were. Jump out the window. Was right behind me. Her claw-like fingers grabbed the back of my shirt. But because my clothes were soaked from the bathtub, I was able to slip out of her grip, flee back to the kitchen. And right there, the keys were on the island table. I grabbed those suckers quick. Then I doubled back around to the living room and managed to throw the door open with the woman breathing down my back. I ran out into the night, not sure where I was going, but I was desperate to get away from that crazy old woman. Yeah. She was still behind me, but I think she was starting to get tired because I was way ahead of her. When I couldn't see her anymore, I almost collapsed from exhaustion. I cautiously walked back home, tired and drenched. I reached the house just as my parents pulled into the driveway. 
My mom had a WTF expression on her face when she saw me, <laughs> but it quickly turned into concern when I started to cry. I told them what had happened and my dad called 911 immediately. Yeah. The rest of the night felt like a blur. So was the rest of the school year, honestly. I'm pretty sure they eventually found her that night, and I assume she was sent to some institution where she belonged. You hope. To this day, I start to feel a boulder-sized lump in my chest when I'm alone at night. Story 2 uh, I just want to say, yeah, I get it. I mean, he's, he's damaged from then on, you know what I mean? There's something in him that, that just... I get it. You know, stuff like that, like trauma like that, never goes away. You know what I mean? You hear about it all the time. Yeah, that's that first story. Very good, very good. Like I said, it's perfect sort of ambiance. You know what I mean? The images are good. The your voice is a perfect, just perfect pitch and all that for this sort of thing. Yeah. Story two, the Watcher. I'm a single woman living in a heavily wooded area of Tennessee, and I prefer to live by myself. I was home alone as usual, watching some cute TV movie, when I got an uneasy feeling of being watched. It's not something that's easy to describe, but I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck lifting like static. My heart rate was faster than usual, a thick beat beneath my skin. I tried to shake off the paranoia and carry on watching television, but the feeling began to go stronger I've done that. until I couldn't concentrate on anything else. Oh. Feeling anxious about the whole thing, I eventually got up. I tried to tell myself I was just being silly, but it was difficult to ignore when it was so strong. I just want to say that I'm very much of a lone wolf, you know what I mean? I love just sort of like my own company a lot, you know? I, I lived alone for a while. And uh, it was kind of like very isolated, you know what I mean? I was in I was in the middle of a town. I was actually living in the town, but it was the top loft part of the building, and there were no win the only windows were in the roof, and they were like that. There were all you could see were planes and the tops of trees and nothing else, and it felt very isolated. And I didn't really have the money to go anywhere to go out anywhere, so I was stuck inside a lot. Got like cabin fever, you know? Crazy. I used to have like any excuse to get out of that place, I would do it. Just jump in my car and, and drive somewhere, or whatever. Go we'll visit my relatives. You know what I mean? And that's not like me. Because, like I said, usually I'm like a very stay at home kind of person. Just about the whole thing. I eventually got up. I tried to tell myself I was just being silly, but it was difficult to ignore when it was so strong. Mm -hmm. I'd been living alone for about two years and I was pretty used to it, but I'd never had such an overwhelming feeling of disconcertment before. It disturbed me. I ended up having a quick look around the house, checking that all the doors were locked and that I was definitely alone. <clears throat> then I checked the windows just as an additional precaution. And that's when I saw it. What? I say it mostly because the gender was indeterminable. Huh? All I saw were the eyes peering at me from the darkness outside the window. It caught me off guard and I did nothing but stare, not entirely sure what to do. Those eyes continued watching me, colorless and unblinking in the dark. Oh. My fingers trembled a bit as I reached over to draw the curtains, shutting the eyes from my sight. I was tempted to call the police but I could barely think rationally let alone move. Hopefully whoever the watcher was, they would just leave. I knew that all the doors were locked, but I still felt in danger. Who in their right mind would be all the way out here at this time? I went around and checked the other windows, closing the curtains so that nobody else could peek inside. Yes, good idea. They were all empty, until I reached the kitchen. Hmm. I was just about to lower the blinds on the window behind the sink when two eyes suddenly appeared, flashing in the dark. 
It startled me. This time I screamed, stumbling yeah, back reflexively. The eyes watched me with the same uncanny intensity. I thought I saw the curl of her mouth, too, floating somewhere in the darkness. Oh. I swallowed down my panic and banged a fist against the window, trying to spook them. Go! Get the hell out of here! I yelled, but the eyes barely gave so much as a flutter. Let me tell you, if I wanted to live in the middle of nowhere, on my own, I'm not doing it unless I'm in a country where you can own a gun, or multiple guns. You know, where I can hide them throughout the house, and, and or weapons, or whatever. Because, yeah, you, 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 you gotta be prepared for, for weirdos and, and creeps to come. See, that's the only thing, like I said, this, I, I'm very much like a, a lone wolf. So, I would sort of gravitate toward that sort of way of life, of living, you know. In a house, not, not attached to anywhere else. But the thing that would put me off is people like that. Weirdos, yeah? You can just turn up at your house at any time and just ugh, upend your life, you know? <laughs> or end it, even. Spook them. Go, get the hell out of here, I yelled. But the eyes barely gave so much as a flutter. Tugged at the strings and the blinds rattled down, and still shaking, I went back to the front room. There was a chill in the house oh, that's now. Crazy. For a moment, I was worried that I'd left a window open somewhere, letting in some cool winter air, but I realized it was just me, my own fear. When I had finally calmed down and found my resolve, I grabbed my flashlight and Ruger pistol from the drawer and went outside. Yes. It was a chilly no, night. Wait, 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 wait. Havoc with my vision. No. The beam of my flashlight tracking shadows all across the lawn. <coughs> I went all around the house, flashing the light over mm. each window. But I never found the stranger who'd been watching me. Even now, I still remember their eyes peering through the glass, eerily intense. I obviously didn't sleep that night. Whoever or whatever it was still remains a mystery. Story three. Okay, Mike. Second story, just as creepy as the first. Well, actually, no. Until I, the first one was worse because it was a kid, as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, see that whole living alone thing. Yeah, I I can totally relate to that. <laughs> it's creeping me out even more because of it. I think it's time to turn around. <laughs> yeah, see see the part where you pick up the gun. Yes, completely agree with that. See the part where you went outside in the darkness? No. I mean, I get it. He wants to like, see if he can find whoever it is. He wants to go to, you know, he wants to try and find them before they try and get him, sort of thing. I get that, but I don't know. I suppose when you live alone in the middle of nowhere, you're, you're made of sterner stuff, you know? <laughs> or maybe having a gun just made her feel braver. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't know what I would have done in that in that situation, to be honest. You don't know until you're in it, yeah? Until you're in that situation, you don't really know for sure. It's that sort of thing. Story 3. Voices in the Walls It happened during my first week at my new university. I had just moved into a decent apartment with an eye shot of the school, in preparation for the first day of the first semester and I was feeling the nervous anticipation of living on my own for the first time. Sleep eluded me that first night. I was kept up both by my anxiety and excitement. It must have been nearing two in the morning when I heard voices. Not gonna lie, it was quite unsettling at first. I thought they were coming from inside the room. As if someone was inside my apartment. But I quickly realized the voices were coming through the walls. Since I was already feeling anxious, the whole thing creeped me out. Yeah. I couldn't hear what they were saying muffled through the walls, but they kept me up for the rest of the night. I wish I could say that was the end of it, but it wasn't. The next few nights were the same. 
I would usually wake up around the same time after midnight and hear them. I figured it was just my neighbors speaking, but the voices gradually grew louder. They began to pervade my sleep, creep into my dreams, and drag me right back into wakefulness. Then one night, things got way worse. I woke up one night to raised voices. The tension was palpable through the walls, oh, and I could feel goosebumps racing along my skin as I listened to them. I hadn't heard them fight like this before, and it seriously scared me. I had to lay there listening to the voices trembling with anger, oh. sharp and vicious through the cracks in the walls. Then I heard a thud, right against the wall, on the other side of the room. No. I swear my heart stopped. Everything went quiet after that. The silence was what would you do? Okay, and when I lived alone, I had like um, a scary corridor, yeah. When I lived alone, people lived below me, and sometimes I could hear music and all coming up. But I don't know what I would do if I heard that, because you don't want to get involved. You know what I mean? That's, that's, the, that's people's perf personal argument, you know what I mean? But when you hear somebody like, Beating on someone else or something? What do you do? Do you call the cops? Do you go and bang on the door and, and hopefully scare them back into sanity? What? Maybe you'll be the one getting beat on next, you know? It's one of those situations you never want to be in, you know? At least I wouldn't. Definitely not. Well, this, is, this, is, this one's going to be a bad one, I can tell. I can tell. Right against the wall, on the other side of the room. Yes, yeah. where my heart stopped. Everything went quiet after that. The silence felt loud. On one hand, I was grateful for the peace, but I couldn't get that thud out of my head. Uh huh. What had happened? Were they okay? After what seemed like an eternity, I finally gave into my exhaustion and passed out. <laughs> I woke up screaming when someone rapidly knocked on the door. Whoa. Fists were slamming desperately against the wood. God, scared me. I could feel the vibrations in my head. I was terrified. I was alone and it was in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to answer the door. No. But they kept knocking, and with such urgency. I felt compelled to get up. My door didn't have a peephole or anything, so I opened it up slowly keeping a foot wedged against the back of it in case I had to shut it quickly. Yeah, good idea. To my surprise, it was a young woman. Her face was barely visible. It was obstructed by what seemed to be blood-soaked hair. From what I could see, one of her eyes was red from crying. And there was a bruise flowering across her cheek. I realized it was my neighbor. She struggled to get words out when I asked her what happened. She sounded almost like how a deaf person speaks. She told me in hushed panic whispers that she'd had a fight with her boyfriend, and that he had tried to kill her. I noticed that her jaw was completely broken. So before she finished talking, I had the door open and was ushering her inside, locking it after her. I turned around towards her, and what I saw next absolutely horrified me. Her hair barely moved out of the way when I noticed that not only was her eyeball hanging out, but her boyfriend had ripped her mouth open into a glass. Oh, no, 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 no. What? Nah, you see, see, I wouldn't have brought her in to, the, to my apartment. I, I would have I got my phone, called the police, and then, you know, you know, and been there with her in the hallway. No, I'm not, I'm not bringing her into my place. No. No. That's insane. Okay, I will. Uh, anything can scare Rose Pan. What? Like, you, you can't tell me that scream didn't get you. <laughs> it didn't get you? It, we see, I'm wearing headphones. I don't know if you're wearing headphones. But it's pretty loud in my ears, so, yeah. That's the only reason it got me. Her hair barely moved out of the way when I noticed that not only was her eyeball <gasps> hanging out, but her boyfriend had ripped her mouth open into a Glasgow mm. smile. I immediately understood why she was talking like that. Yeah. I told her to stay where she was while I phoned 911. 
As I was speaking to them, I could hear someone thrashing around next door, things breaking and shattering. My neighbor, who I later learned was named Emily, looked terrified. I was scared too, <laughs> mainly that the boyfriend would come looking for her. Yes. We ended up hiding in my room until the cops and medics arrived. He tried to run away, but they released a canine unit after him, which nice. was quite satisfying to be honest. <laughs> I'm sure you can understand the anger I was feeling after seeing what he'd done to her. After speaking with the detective about the experience, I later learned that her boyfriend was honorably discharged from the Marines after two terms in Afghanistan. He had suffered from PTSD. A week later, I saw Emily's father helping her move out. She had a patch over her eye, stitches across her face, and she looked absolutely miserable. It was a horrible experience to say the least, and it made my first week at college memorable for all the wrong reasons. I just really want to thank all of you who made it to the end of the video. This is my first video on YouTube, and it's a very new experience for me. <laughs> but it was actually pretty fun to make, and uh, I'd like to do a lot more of these. So, if you're into creeps as much as I am, consider subscribing and hit the like button so that other people could see this. It'd make me a happy man. All right, I'm out of here. Let me know what you all thought in the comments. Oh yeah, before I forget, special shout out to the homies from the spaceship. Y'all know who you are. Peace out. Okay. Okay, that is the end of the video. And like I said, Mike's in here right now, the guy who was narrating it, made the video, and yeah, that was, oh wow, that was something else, man, seriously, really keep it up, I can't wait to see what you do, Tan, I am out of here.